Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Afifa binti Swami. I am from group 3 and the topic for our group presentation is censorship. I will cover the first part of the presentation uh, which is about censorship in democracy and the arts. Okay. Firstly, censorship is defined as the act of censoring or suppressing an acceptable part in speech writing or other published works such as books, reviews, films, news um, or other arts that are considered as obscene, politically unacceptable or offensive. Uh, in some other definition, censorship is also defined as the prohibition or suppression of speech or writing that is deemed subversive of the common good. Okay. Who engaged in censorship? So basically the government and the private institution uh, they may engage in censorship because they have the authority to do so in terms of law but some other group or institution may also propose a petition for censorship. Uh, there are two types of censorship which is self-censorship and also general censorship. Uh, self-censorship is when an individual uh, engage in censorship of their own work. Uh, for example, an author or other creator, they censor certain parts of their work uh, or certain part of their book, for example, because they are aware of the social or cultural acceptance or maybe they're aware about the law cited for this kind of thing. So, this is referred to as self-censorship. And for gender censorship, it occurs in a variety of different media including music, uh, speech, books, films, um, and other arts, also the press, radio, televisions, for a variety of claimed reasons, including for the national security, to protect the children, to control obscenity, child pornography, hate speeches, uh, to promote or restrict uh, political or religious views and to prevent slander. So this is some of the reasons why censorship is applied for democracy. Um, I'm sure many of us know what democracy is. It is a, a system of government uh, in which the representative um, or the leaders are elected by the people themselves, like Niger for example and democratic nation based on the belief and freedom and equality among people. So basically, um, freedom of information, speech and the press is firmly rooted in the structures of the modern democratic thought. Even the UN declarations of human rights adopted by the General Assembly in 1948 declares that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and, and to through any media or regardless and regardless of frontiers. This is quoted in Article 19. So basically the people believe that they have the rights to to think, to express, to speak, whatever they want. But um Apparently, the issue arises when political censorship occurs. Okay, political censorship exists when a government attempts to conceal, fake, distort, or falsify information that its citizens receive by suppressing or crowding out political news that the public might receive through news outlet. Okay, so is it, so uh, when like there's no um, neutral or objective information people will be unable to dissent the government or the political party in charge. And, uh, for example, um, the government or the political party in charge during that time want to like conceal some sort of inform information from the citizens, from the people, uh, in which the people have the rights to know. Uh, so, this is one thing. And other thing could happen when um, when the government censor uh, the internet. So for your information, Malaysia is among the countries that 
apply the internet censorship and in an article called Internet Censorship 2020, a global map of internet restrictions authored by uh, a UK based technology website said it is found that Malaysia scored 6 out of 10 of the censorship scale in which 10 being the most censored owing to restrictions on social media and political reporting. The restriction or the banning of torrent sites, pornography sites and the restrictions placed on social media. But my point is about political reporting. So um, basically we cannot simply make political criticism, criticism um, because there are laws cited for internet censorship. And if you have heard about Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission MCMC, they uh, will be in charge to block different categories of websites in addition to Communication Multimedia Act 233 and Copyright Act also include State Sharia Act okay okay uh, basically if some group of people they want to uh, impose their political ideas or hate speech uh, about uh, the government or the constitution or even the king in their blog or they want to publish it through like uh, online platforms such as Twitter they could be charged by the penal code because of their action uh, so basically that will be in terms of law okay. moving on uh, to the censorship of the arts okay so basically, the censorship of the arts is to remove certain artwork from public display, to censor exhibitions, to label particular works as controversial, and to identify some artworks and artists as objectionable. Okay. These actions arise from a view that uh, censorship is needed in order to avoid the subversions of politics and the corruptions of morals. Uh, like I said earlier, Freedom of expression is guaranteed by the constitutions because people have the rights, their, their human rights, right? Uh, but then, uh, this freedom of expression includes both verbal expressions, which is speech and writing, and also non-verbal expressions. And this group of people who um, strive for uh, the arts uh, claim that uh, the freedom of expression, which is non-verbal expressions, includes the language of the various arts. Free communications is essential to the preservation of a free society and a creative culture. Now, as always in our history, artworks such as literature, music, theatre, painting, sculpture and dance are among uh, their most effective instruments of freedom. So basically, if the arts are censored then what freedom what freedom do they have okay when it comes to censorship um, of the art is basically more to the um, sexual explicit content or maybe some kind of like political ideas or direct insults to for example people's religious beliefs or um, to the uh, authority or maybe, or maybe to uh, people for personal reasons. So for the moral views for censorship, I will uh, talk about Plato's arguments for censorship. There are two. The first one is uh, to protect the children. Okay. Basically, um, Plato's first argument uh, is that censorship is justified because it prevents the harmful influence of ideas that might morally corrupt the children. Okay, the adults have the obligation to educate uh, to educate the young uh, children uh, in order to shape their moral characters. If the children are exposed to um, songs, stories, images that are morally uplifting. And then their moral characters will be shaped positively. But if they are exposed to visual contents that may uh, that may promote violence, sexual 
promiscuity, drug use or disrespect for authority. Basically, uh, Plato agree that um, certain contents need to be censored in order to protect the moral of the children. And then uh, the second argument is to protect the society in which this Okay, uh, Plato's second argument for censorship is that it is needed for the protection of our society. Uh, Plato argues that um, uh, there is a specific reason to censor potentially corrupting materials from the youth and that is because when they grow up, the survival of the country will depend upon them. So basically, uh, Plato wants to stress that uh, the leaders are responsible uh, to set the country's directions and also to mediate the competing desires among its citizens. So um, try to think about the worst political leader. Um, for example, they involve in um, scandals or crimes or uh, maybe they uh, can be greedy, selfish uh, and things like that. That cannot be good for the youth to learn because the youth will soon be the next leader. And um, it is mentioned that the leaders need to have their characters shaped by a search for what is good, for what is good, just and true. Okay. So when, translate, uh, when translating Plato's message into our contemporary democratic environment, he is saying that a successful democracy depends upon citizens choosing to do what is morally morally right for society and not surrender to their worst selfish desire. Uh, from that. Society can advance that goal by censoring material that glorifies our basis drives. Okay. Uh, in short, censorship is there for the survival of the society. Uh, we need to take seriously the critical uh, role that high moral standards play in holding a nation together and keeping it strong and sometimes this involves censoring ideas that undermine those standards. So that's basically from Plato. Okay, the next uh, major argument for censorship is by, uh, Amer by an American philosopher, Joel Feinberg, in which uh, his argument is that uh, censorship is needed to protect uh, us from offensive conduct and speech. There are many conducts or speeches that may bring harm or offense to other people and for that reason, these expressions should be suppressed, even if they do not morally um, corrupt children or put our society at risk. The fact that they cause offence in and of itself is a justification for the censorship. Okay, to conclude, firstly, uh, I'd like to say that everyone has uh, the rights to freedom of opinions and expressions, but we should not abuse that right in which we should not harm or offend other people by our speech or writings because that will not make a good society if everyone keeps uh, if everyone keeps on offending each other first. Uh, the second one is um, the authority or the government should not falsify or hinder or block information from reaching the public because uh, the public also um, has the right to know about certain information. For the arts, yes, we have the freedom uh, to imaginations, creative ideas, and arts. But um, we must be careful not to have sexual explicit content uh, or images, or maybe um, you know include the political ideas or dire insult to other people's religions or anyone because that would not bring any good it will just bring more harm and will make moral corruptions and even uh, create friction among people and that is all for me thank you assalamualaikum i am Nuria agrana as a third presenter i am responsible to present you guys the third subtopic which is censorship
and pornography. So before we dive deeper into the topic, let me explain to you guys about the definition first. Okay. So since Afifa already talked about censorship definition, I will dive into the definition of pornography straight away. So what is pornography? Pornography can be defined as any material, either picture or words that is sexually explicit. So definition first ni dia kurang accurate sebab semua benda mengandungi sexually explicit material akan dikira sebagai point. Buku sains contohnya, ada gambar-gambar genitals apa semua tu tapi kita tak kira as point pun. Betul tak? So here comes the second definition of pornography. Pornography is sexually explicit material verbal or pictorial that is primarily designed to produce sexual arousal in viewers. So, it's important to highlight the primarily designed to produce sexual arousal in viewers part since some sexually explicit materials not only aim to uh, arouse audiences but also aim for another thing such as artistic and political point. Jadi, hadilah definition yang ketiga kita. Iaitu, pornography is sexually explicit material designed to produce sexual arousal in consumers that is bad, sorry, that is bad in a certain way. So, this definition of pornography makes it analytically true that uh, pornography is bad by definition. Material that is not bad in the relevant way is not considered as pornography. So, move on to the next slide. I include the pros and cons of pornography. Mm, okay, well, we all Muslim thus, it is well known to us that pornography is heavily prohibited. However, religion aside, now I am discussing this topic from moral point of view, okay? If there are cons, there are also pros, in, uh, there are also pros of something. So, based on my reading on the internet, I put two pros as what they claim. Firstly, self-pleasure. Okay, sexual desire is indeed human nature. For our religion, Islam already suggests a solution if we are not married. So, for us, we are encouraged to fast. But for the Muslim out there, they want uh, a fast solution. And for that, one of it is watch and masturbate uh, for, uh, according to pornography. So, Secondly is increase personal knowledge about sexuality. Ha, yang ni tak yalah terang. Macam tu lah dia. So, as for the cons, there are three here which are unrealistic uh, expectations. A kind to all the story as well as good feelings. Okay. Hmm. Firstly, unrealistic expectation. Uh, macam kita tahu, pornografi ni dia scripted. The reactions and all other things can be said as so watching pornography can somehow make someone has unrealistic expectations so once they have a partner they think the act of sex should be exactly like the scenes in the pornography or maybe their partner should have a body like the attracts or attractions in the video secondly Secondly, watching pornography is a kind to all the terrain. Even though some may say that pornography is harmless as it is not actual infidelity, in a way, it is still similar to all the terrain. So, last but not least, cause someone to feel guilty. So, this is because most people know pornography is immoral and it is our nature to feel guilty when doing something wrong. Thus, watching pornography in secret may make someone to feel guilty Especially if the person has religion that forbids this, such as us, Muslim, or maybe they have a partner. So next, I will talk about the, the I will talk about the definition of the word obscene as in most act in laws, they use the word obscene instead of pornography. Okay, so according to the dictionary, obscene is anything that is offensive rude or shocking usually because of being too obviously related to sex or showing sex. So there are three conditions if we want something to consider as legally obscene. Firstly, the average person would find it overly sexualized. Secondly, the word offensively describes sexual conduct. And thirdly, the words lack literary, artistic, political or scientific value. Next, here I choose 
two countries as example for censorship law which are Malaysia and Japan. For Malaysia, no person shall have or cause himself to have in his possession, custody, control or ownership of any film or film publicity material which is obscene or is otherwise against public against public decency. So this act is not precise since it can be clearly seen here that watching pornography video online is technically said to be okay as there is no law which specifically mentioned about the offense for watching video online. So the only thing that one need to bear in mind is that Malaysian citizens should never personally own the pornographic material in any electronic devices as it is an offense under the penal code and the film censorship act. So as for the censorship, I don't think it is applicable for Malaysia since we don't have any uh, adult video industry that involved in adult video making. I guess lah. Uh. So as for Japan, Article 175 of Japan's criminal code state that a person should, uh, sorry, that a person who distributes, sell, or display in public an obscene document, drawing, or any other object shall be punished. Sounds like porn is illegal in Japan, right? So then why there's so much porn in Japan? Apparently, according to current interpretation of law, if that part, that part, is censored, it is not considered as indecent or illegal anymore. And there's even organizations that check every point to make sure that censorship is adequate. So next, here comes the most important question for this subtopic. <clears throat> is it morally right for the authority to censor or ban pornography from society? So I decide to take the liberty limiting principle Liberty Limiting Principles by Jones, John Stuart Mill in order to tackle this issue, okay? So what is limit, uh, so what is Liberty Limiting Principle? Senang kata, uh, limiting, Liberty Limiting Principles ni refers to the condition where a government may be morally justified in passing law that limit the liberty of its citizen. There are four conditions which are harm principles, uh, legal paternalism, legal moralism, as well as the offense principle. So, firstly, harm principle is when the law is permissible in order to prohibit individuals from causing harms to others. As legal paternalism is when laws is permissible in order to prohibit individuals from harming their own self. This is this is critic that there is no need for the government to meddle in citizen private life. People should have the freedom to harm themselves if they want or if they are stupid enough. They claim lah. So it's their business. They claim. But oh well. Mm. Thirdly, offense principle where loss is permissible in order to prohibit, indi to prohibit individuals from offending others. So this principle applied in situations that cause discomfort feelings such as uh, shame and disgust to others. And last but not least, uh, legal moralism that happens when laws are permissible in order to protect common moral standard. So basically, this principle limits the freedom of another purely to enforce certain morals. So it is not based on harm, offense or others. In other words, your freedom may be taken away just because you do something considered as immoral. Okay. Next, back on the question. We will discuss why pornography need to be censored or banned based on the four conditions of the liberty principle. So firstly, the harm principles. Does porn cause harm to others? Not necessarily, but there's a high change a lot of cases that porn can cause sex-related crime, such as rape, pedophile, as well as incest. And then, according to legal paternalism, Porn should be made illegal since the exposure of pornography harms the person who are exposed to it. For instance, porn audience may have emotional problems and distorted view of sex. Okay. So thirdly, offense principles suggest that pornography is offensive. 
this a bit tricky since some people may might be offended by porn. So, but others may not find that offensive. But still, not all people in adult video is by volunteer. Some may be a victim or maybe does not give a concern to be in the video. Thus, censoring or banning porn somehow can protect non-consenting adults from pornography. Last but not least, legal moralism. It is uh, believed that pornography itself is a morally repugnant. Many people feel that morality is not enough uh, of a reason to restrict someone's freedom, but this principle is often endorsed by fundamentalist groups. For instance, uh, abortion should be illegal simply because it is immoral. Same goes to pornography. Next, we will discuss about the liberal defense against censorship in pornography. Okay, liberal defended a right to pornography on three main grounds. Firstly, freedom of speech or expression. So, freedom of speech protects individuals' right, in this case, pornographers, to freely express their opinions and to communicate those opinions to others, no matter how people may find it offensive uh, or disagreeable. So, they believe that this type of freedom should not be interfered or taken by others, by the authority or by the government, as long as it does not have a compelling interest is not a public concern or threatens national safety, government cannot censor it. So the harm caused by expression must be very certain and very great before it is legitimate for a state for the authority to prohibit it. For instance, we would be justified in banning a certain type of pornography like BDSM only when we are very sure that on average, tokens of that type cause very great harm to the mention, as what I mentioned earlier. Lah. So, secondly, liberals have defended a right to pornography on the grounds of a right to privacy. They believe that it is individual's right to do any private activity according to it. Secondly, liberals have defended a right to pornography on the grounds of a right to privacy. They believe that it is uh, our right, our individual's right to do any private activity according to our own case without any threat from the authority. However, like the right uh, to freedom of speech, the liberal commitment to privacy is not absolute. It can be overridden if the private activities of individuals can cause significant harm to others. So thirdly, comparatively harmless. Neither are uh, the expression of pornographic opinions nor the indulging of a private taste for pornography cause insignificant harm sorry cause significant harm to others. In the relevant sense of harm like I mentioned in the freedom of speech earlier, hence the liberals believe that the publication and voluntary private consumption of pornography is non optimistic or the authorities business okay so last word from my point of view i think i am with the conservative that believe pornography itself should be made illegal since it is immoral apa lagi nak bincang tentang censorship in pornography okay so but Still, there are a lot of people out there that are addicted to pornography. I think that banning the pornography will not solve the problem and in fact may create another problem. For instance, our tahun hari tu, Thailand decided to ban all pornography websites and its citizens protest against it. Chaotic, you know? So, thus I think that one of the alternative, can we say it as alternative? Uh, maybe a small solution is to censor certain part of pornography in order to make sure pornography industry would not go overboard with the content and they will take care of their workers welfare in the industry uh, better you know uh, while completing this task I read that there's a lot of sex workers especially women that are often forced to do things they do not want to and some cause trauma to them and even need to go to the hospital after the shooting session. So, yeah. This industry is you know, well. Okay, I think 
this all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Siti Hajar binti Osman Siru and I would be presenting on the topic censorship in hedonistic entertainment. So before we move on, I would like to uh, give the definition of hedonistic entertainment. Actually, based on my research, there is no definite uh, definition on the term hedonistic entertainment. Um, hedonistic is one word and entertainment is one word. So when those two put together, they became a term. So um, I would like to give the definition of hedonistic first and then entertainment. Um, based on Merriam-Webster dictionary, hedonistic uh, means uh, devoted to the pursuit of pleasure or relating to or characterized by hedonism. I think all of us know what is hedonism. We've learned about this in uh, Introduction to Moral Philosophy class, uh, which the proponents of hedonism are Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. So the fundamental of hedonism or hedonistic is that we um, want to achieve pleasure like we indulge ourselves in pleasure and happiness like you live your life the fullest you want to experience every every pleasurable experience in life that life can offer you and we would reject um, pain and suffering as much as possible so that is the m basis of hedonism Moving on, the definition of entertainment uh, from Merriam-Webster Dictionary uh, is an amusement or diversion provided especially by performers. It is something uh, that is diverting and engaging, such as like uh, a public performance or a light comic or adventure novel. Um, however, I think in this 21st century, um, entertainment is like too broad and there are many forms of entertainment and the first one i think would be um, films music um, performance of any kind and things like that you know things that um, you indulge in every day even the social media is some form of entertainment to us so moving on, um, does entertainment was solely uh, based on hedonistic pleasure? Um, based on my research, the answer is yes, um, because entertainment can produce positive reaction towards the media and its contents and exposure to media entertainment uh, was primarily explained with hedonistic motivation such as escapism uh, or mood optimization. It means that um, entertainment can brings you, um, you know, like makes you very happy, and it, it can makes you escape reality, because like for example, like when you watch a movie and it's very good, and you feel like you are in some kind of like another re reality or another world, and it was engaging, and you feel happy, and you laugh, and you see that movie, so it kind of. Um, optimize your mood from sad to happy something like that you know even if you um, listen to songs uh, it will have the positive reaction in you like it will cheer you up or you know makes you feel um, instead of like just um, d you don't have like mood or anything and you hear s you hear songs that you know like lift you up it lift your spirits up so that's the the thing about entertainment it is um, purely in hedonistic pleasure however um, entertainment research has seen a shift uh, from the notion of mere pleasure seeking to the idea of truth seeking um, acknowledging the fact that besides the hedonic striving for positive effect and optimized mood more complex forms of entertainment experience refer to intrinsic human needs such as self-determination psychological growth and meaning of life so um, this is where the term eudaimonia came from eudaimonia is <laughs> a greek word um, and Oliver and Rainey 2011 argued that individuals may view media entertainment for more than just 
hedonic reason and therefore coined the term eudaimonia to represent the motivation to watch something that is meaningful but not necessarily funny or lighthearted from the perspective of Roth et al 2014 it is more likely that eudaimonic experience led to a feeling of being informed and likely even to better information processing so it means that if we say that um we view entertainment as um like hedonistic pleasure then why would people listen to sad song or sad films um does people derive some kind of pleasure in that and the answer is that those are not hedonistic pleasure but rather it is a uh, idomania idomania is like this to put to put into simpler words i would give <laughs> A food analogy. Um, if you eat ice cream, um, and it was your favorite ice cream, like Baskin Robbins or something, you indulge in hedonic pleasure because you eat things that you love, that you like. However, eudaimonia is like when you give the ice cream to another person. The person who you see is like drooling over watching you eat that ice cream because it gives you like a sense of pleasure uh, and fulfillment when you watch um y- you know your good deed can affect someone else too so that was the main difference between uh hedonism and eudaimonia um hence in conclusion um researchers suggested that enjoyment of media entertainment can be best understood in terms of need fulfillment in general with the fulfillment of lower order needs more indicative of hedonic considerations and the fulfillment of higher order needs more indicative of what we are calling eudaimonic concerns it is like um again i give the example of watching films like if you watch something just because um you just for mere pleasure seeking like um because the movie is so good like the avengers like everyone loved the avengers because there's tons of uh, action sequence and you know like bombs and building crashes you know like especially guys like this kind of you know like adrenal- adrenaline rush movie like that and you just watch it just because of that reason um so you are considered as hedonist person However, if you watch the Avengers because you want to you want to you want to um see the deeper themes that revolve around those films like friendship or sacrifices and it you you got something from the film like basically it teach you something and you feel you know like you 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 feel a lot more rewarded afterward when you um take something valuable from the film and incorporate it into your own life like you understood the meaning of the theme that revolve around that films like you know like sacrifices and it makes you appreciate more about humanity about life and death things like that so you are considered as um having a eudaimonic motivation There are many forms of hedonistic entertainment but uh, in this presentation I am going to focus on one form of entertainment which is films. So what are the ways um for films um to be censored? Um actually um FCC which stand for a uh, Federal Communication Commission they classify material as uh, either indecent, obscene or profane so um the fcc actually can prohibit um broadcaster from airing obscene programming and um, they can decide whether or not material is obscene by using a three prong test uh, which is first um the criteria is that uh causes the average person to have lustful or sexual thoughts second it depicts lawfully offensive sexual conduct and third it lacks literary artistic political or scientific value so if a material meeting all these three criteria so it is officially considered as obscene material and usually applies to hardcore pornography indecent material however um the criteria is that 
1. Contains graphic, sexual or excretory depictions 2. Dwells at length on depiction of sexual or excretory organs and Third is used simply to shock or arouse an audience. Um, if a material is deemed indecent, based on these three criteria, the material cannot be broadcast between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. to make it less likely that children will be exposed to it. So it means that um, only adult can watch the indecent material if they want <laughs> to. Next is the haze code. Um, this is because um, you know a lot of people believe that Hollywood films and their associated hedonic um, culture was a negative moral influence. Hence, um, this code is established and is popularly known by the name of its author, Will Hayes, um, who is the chairman of the industry self regulatory motion picture producer and distributors association which was founded in 1922 so what it does is that um his could um they enact strict guidelines on the portrayal of violence crimes such as murder theft robbery safe cracking and dynamiting of trains mines building etc could not be presented in details. Um, the court also addressed the portrayals of sex, saying that the sanctity of the institution of marriage and the home shall be upheld. Pictures shall not infer that low forms of sex relationship are the accepted or common thing. So, Hayes Court is basically uh, the Hollywood self-censorship. Okay, second is rating system. Um, as filmmaker, they began pushing the boundaries of acceptable visual content. The Hollywood industry um, create a system to ensure appropriate audiences for films. I think you may know about this. Like uh, when you watch trailers for movie, um, the first thing that they will show is that um, you know PG thirteen or R rated or things like that. Um, I think same goes to television as well. So I will clar clarify each one. So, uh, a G rating signals that subject matter is suitable for general audiences. PG stands for parental guidance suggested. PG-13 strongly advises guidance for children under age 13 because of possibly inappropriate material. R requires accompaniment by an adult for children under age 17 or in some state 18 and NC 17 or X prohibit anyone under age 17 or 18 in some states from entering the theater so in conclusion is censorship in entertainment or hedonistic entertainment really necessary i think that a lot uh debate has been going on since the dawn of time to clarify this issue and it still remains uh, unresolved by now so personally i think censorship is important and it should be applied in the correct situation and the government cannot simply ban or censor a movie because it will not ensure positive balance of freedom of speech okay for example um i will give you a comparison um i watch a tv program um i think the segment that i watch was uh, it focuses on women's health and beauty or something and um, I remember I um, watched a woman um, walking into a spa center and she was being massaged however I was quite uh, shocked to see that um, certain body parts are visible during that segment um, that is one one scenario and another scenario um, I, the, and this is real too I watch um, a, a TV program or a film I don't know but I watch 
this is the same channel okay i watch um uh, a scene where a man is smoking and also wearing i don't know like t-shirt but they blurred out um the cigarette and also the logo of a t-shirt and i was um very weird because if they can censor that why can't they censor body parts because i think that's just not fair because smoking it's not really like offensive because you see people smoke outside in public every day it's not it's not something new it's not like um I, for me anyway I, I don't think it's like offensive i don't know about anyone else but i think body parts are more sensitive than um smoking so i think the government need to create um a balance by creating an alternative policy before simply ban or censor a movie or a tv program uh, to create a balance between freedom of speech among people involved in film industry or entertainment industry um, at the same time having um you know having the opportunity to fully govern this matter Hello, my name is Razan and I'm going to present on censorship based on mass media, electronic, printed or cyber. So the first one is the definition. So what is mass media? Mass media is a communication that reaches and influences a large number of people in a short amount of time. So as we all know, we are every day exposed to mass media. And uh, we have uh, this uh, statistic shows that consumers from around the world uses at least 7.5 hours a day with media. Examples of mass media is television, newspapers, magazines, and radio. So there are seven types of mass media. The first one is print, which we all know is books and newspapers. Recordings, it could be CDs, it could be DVDs, it could be cassettes, it could be gamophones. Um, uh, the third one is radio. The uh, fourth one is cinema, which is movies, um, television, which is the live news or TV shows. Uh, the sixth one is internet, as we are all always exposed to, and mobile phones. So let's move on to the characteristics of mass media. The first one is, it is mostly a one-way com communication because usually there's a presenter and an audience and usually it's a one-way conversation com communication from the presenter to the audience and one of the other characteristics of mass media is that the audience has a great deal of choice like for example if they're listening to um, hits fm and they they don't want to hear any news on celebrities or anything they can actually change the channel so uh, they have like a great deal of choice um, another thing is it reaches large audience at once and usually it aims to attract the audience as large as possible because they are trying to convey the message um, they are trying to convey the message uh, fast another thing is mass media is usually influences influenced by society and also influences society in a way so let's move on to the functions of mass media the first one is to entertain like we we are entertained by mass media like mobile phones for example there's transmission of heritage the um, mass media also functions as an information giver uh, they passes information from uh, one one community to another one community to others um, mass media also educates and it is also one of the uh, one of the functions of mass media is to do commercial so what are the advantages of mass media? The first one is it reaches people quickly so you don't have to wait for days for the news to come. For example, what happens around the world for COVID-19, you, you get to know it as soon as possible through mass media. Um, the second one is it creates awareness of any current issues. The third one is it's adaptable to a large number of audience uh, and the fourth one is effective and useful for educational purposes for example we use the internet to access um, uh, materials that we can use for our own uh, studies um, but every every pro has a con so 
The cons for mass media is it once it reaches the audience, there is no turning back, which means um, once people uh, get to know something, it, it spreads. It won't. You, you can take it back. You can you can um, turn back time. So the the ne uh, the second one is it depends on the editor and producer to produce a valuable material. Um, the third one is it may require production time. And the fourth one is it requires training and skills because um, the writing, the words, it has to be in a formal, in a precise way. So what is censorship? So censorship is actually the control of information ideas circulated within a society. So um, a few censorships, I found a few censorships based on mass media. Uh, one of them is print censorship. Uh, it is the act of some authority taking measures to suppress ideas and information within a book. Books are most often censored for age appropriateness, offensive language, sexual content, or other reasons. For example, in Harry Potter books, um, those books are censored in some Christian schools because it, um, it includes witchcraft and sorcery. The second one is cinema censorship. So aside from the usual justifications of pornography and obscenity, some films are censored due to changing racial attitudes or political correctness in order to avoid ethnic stereotyping and ethnic offense despite its historical or artistic value. So uh, things that we have actually seen in cinema, uh, some of the things that are seen as immoral, they are censored. So for example, in the movie Beauty and the Beast, in Malaysia, they um, they postponed for a few days because uh, they there's, there was a homosexual references in the movie. So they made the cuts, they edited, and then um, they, uh, they presented it in the cinemas. The next one is internet censorship. Internet censorship is the control or suppression of the publishing or accessing of information on the internet. So not only organizations may um, censor it for us, we can also censor some things by ourselves which is called self-censorship because uh, it may due to intimidation or fear. The last one is television censorship. So censorship, it rears its head in the prohibition of words, audio, images and combinations thereof that form ideas or brings forth information in a way that is deemed to be somehow harmful. So most of the things that we see on television, it's most likely by one nation. So like for example, in a country, if it's um, censored like nationally, you won't be seeing it anywhere in the nation. But you may see it in other countries. So even with the same, within the same nation, the same ruling party, and the same uh, censorship office, things can change over the time. For an example, Elvis Presley, um, his hip moves were actually censored once, but uh, these days, recent recent years, uh, things are things change. So these things are not censored anymore. So this is one of the things that um, I meant by even within the same nation, the same ruling party things can change. So spurred by the belief that viol violence on television adversely affects children's behavior and attitudes, Congress has attempted several times to encourage the media to adopt voluntary guidelines in the hope that less violence on television will lead to a less violent society. That's why some of the things uh, that we see on TV, violence, violence scenes, are sometimes cut off. Uh, for example, on TV Tigger, TV Tiga or TV Duo, usually if there's any movies that they display, they usually cut off the scene that is that is too extreme. So mass media censorship in moral perspective is often used to impose moral values on society, as in the censorship of material considered obscene. Moral censorship is the removal of materials that are obscene or otherwise cons considered morally questionable. For example, Pornography is often censored under this rationale, especially child pornography, which is illegal and censored in most jurisdictions in the world. So that's all for my part. Thank you so much for listening.